I was on a business conference call with about 30 young entrepreneurs. And as we're diving into a, a conversation about who we can become, one of the women on the call said in the most transparent and authentic and vulnerable way, can a person change? And the answer is yes, you can change. Now, I know there's a, a lot of people who disagree with this. Some people say that people don't change, and, and some people say that people do change. And, and in some ways, the answer is both yes and no. The reality is that if you do not believe you can change, you will not change. If you are convinced you can change, you will change. Uh, it's Carol Dweck who writes the book Mindset, and she talks about how some people have a fixed mindset, some people have a growth mindset. And this is so prevalent in every aspect of our human existence that when you have a fixed mindset, you believe you have a limited amount of intelligence or a limited amount of talent or limited amount of potential. And because of that, you think that you're fixed, that you cannot change. You are who you are, and you're always going to be that. And then people who have a growth mindset, they believe that people can change and that they can change. And so they believe they can grow, they can expand, they can develop, and they can transform. And one of the curious things about this is that how you think about other people is the best mirror of how you actually think about yourself. If you believe people cannot change, you actually believe that you cannot change. Because the only evidence you need to know that people can change is experiencing change yourself. One of the reasons I am so convinced that you can change is that I've changed. I am not the same person I was. I'm not the same person I was at 16 or 26 or 36. I've changed in so many different ways. And, and uh, fortunately, from my own life experience, I've changed in the direction of the person I've wanted to become. But if I had not believed I could change, I would still be the same person. In fact, I remember years ago, I was in a conversation with my brother and uh, we were talking about political issues and philosophical perspectives and our view of reality. And, and in the middle of a conversation, he said, wow, you've really changed. And I, he didn't mean it as a compliment. And I, in that moment, I took it as, as a dig. And I, I wanted to argue and say, no, I haven't. I, I'm still the same person. But I, I just went silent and thought about it during that week. And I came to this overwhelming realization that not only had I changed, but fortunately that change was undeniable. And instead of experiencing it as, um, as a dig, instead of experiencing it as uh, an indictment of my lack of stability, I took it as a compliment. I realized, of course I've changed. If I was at 29, the same person that I was at 19, that would be a tragedy. If I were at 39, the same person I was at 29, that means I was static, unchanging, inflexible, not growing. And so I want you to know that you can change. And not only can you change, but you should change. But there's a question behind that. Can you change your mind? If you cannot change your mind, you will not change. If you can change your mind, you will change. Now, you're mind has the capacity to be changed, but it doesn't change by accident. You have to change your mind with intention. And here's a wonderful thing about us humans. The moment we move to self-awareness, we've begun the journey of change. I, I, uh, I coach someone who works at the highest level of uh, professional sports. And in a conversation, he said to me, do you think I can change? And I said, absolutely. And his response was immediate. He goes, so do I. I believe I can change. In fact, I think I'm already beginning to change. And as we process through the change that were necessary, I said, you're already 90% of the way there. In our first session, and he goes, why would you say that? I said, because the hard work is realizing that you need to change, realizing what needs to change, and realizing what you need to do to change. Once you've done that work, the other 10% comes with the momentum of the choices that you've made to bring the change. Can you change? Yes. Can you change your mind? Well, maybe that's a question only you can answer. Will you change your mind is really the right question. Oh, and by the way, that's why sometimes pain 
is the only material that will convince us to change. Without pain, we stay the same. Without pain, we're not motivated to change. There has to be a break point where the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of changing. And the moment you're sick of staying the same, the moment you're done with the status quo, the moment you can no longer live with who you are right now, that's the moment where you have the fuel to make the choices that will bring the change that you long for. One of the most exciting things in life is to realize that we human beings are designed for change. Not only can we change, but we must change. I, I remember years ago, my wife Kim asked me the question, are human beings capable of anything? And my response to Kim was, human beings are capable of anything necessary for survival. That's what human history teaches us. That's what you learn about humans in different societies and different environments in different histories. You find that there are tribes in, in Mexico who can run over 70 miles a day because it was necessary to survive. There are tribes in the Amazon that have a PhD level knowledge of botany by the age of 10 because it was necessary for survival. All over the world, you find phenomenal expressions of human capacity that we thought were impossible. They were never impossible. They just were not necessary. The real question is, how much pain do you need to be in to finally choose to change? I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of pain. I would like to minimize my pain as much as I can. So I've made a choice in my life. Make the change before the pain makes you make the change. Evaluate who you are, decide who you must become, and then make the choices that move you there. And ironically, sometimes those choices, when they're not motivated by pain, actually drive you to pain. Just uh, a few minutes before I began recording the session. I was over at the gym working out and today with a trainer and I was in so much pain. After about 45 minutes, I looked at the trainer and I said, I think I'm going to puke. And then she said, okay, now we're going to do this. She did not let me rest. She did not give me a moment of reprieve. She just told me what the next exercise was. And what I've come to realize over time is that every improvement I want to make in my life, everywhere in my life where I want to get better, anywhere where I pursue greatness, it drives me to pain. I have to not only embrace the pain, but realize that pain always lies to you. It always tells you you have greater limitations than you do. If you'll drive through the pain, you will drive straight to the change. The moment you ask, can I change? You know you need to. And here's what you need to do. Change your actions. Do something today that reflects not the person you don't want to be, but reflects the person you do want to be. Make one choice today that is reflective of the new you. And then every single time you do something that reaffirms the old you, recognize it, identify it, and stop it. Replace the old you with the new you by making new choices that take place of the old choices. All right, so let's get more granular here. If you need to lose weight, pick one meal a day where you're eating healthy. I know it's crazy. They tell you to get healthy right away, eat all the meals right, but that's kind of tough. So start eliminating one thing from your menu that you should not eat and add one thing that you should eat. Make a small move toward health. If you need to get healthy, but you're not at all athletic, just start walking. Add 500 steps and then 1,000 steps and then 5,000 steps. By the way, I actually monitor my steps. And so I'm trying to move toward 10,000 steps. I'm hoping the guy did not lie to me, but he told me that if I walk 10,000 steps for 30 days, that the fat will melt off of me and I am ready to have a polar meltdown and transform my body and my health. You can make small choices that will have great results. Maybe you start with anger. 
Here's what you need to do. Don't say the first thing you think. What you need to do is learn how not to react. Your anger is you losing control over your emotions. So what you need to do is, okay, shut your mouth. See, what you need to do is not say what you want to say. Reflect, let it internalize, process it, and then respond. The best way to deal with anger is to listen, not speak, not react, reflect, and then later come back when the anger is dissipated and speak your mind. So can you change? Absolutely. If you're willing to change your mind, but it only begins there. Change always begins from the inside out. You have to change your mind to be able to change your choices, to be able to change your actions, to be able to change your life. I, I've had a really interesting journey this past year. Like a lot of people during the pandemic, I, um, I gained more weight than I should have. I gained more weight than I wanted to. And I clearly got myself out of shape. And I remember I was in the gym by myself working out and I thought to myself, wow, am I out of shape? And I went on and had a follow-up thought, I am really fat. <laughs> and, and then instantly I heard this other voice correcting me inside of my head. It said, you are not an out of shape guy trying to get back into shape. You are not someone who's overweight trying to become athletic. You're an athlete who happened to gain weight. You are a person who actually is healthy, who is driving yourself back to who you are. That mental shift is really significant. How you see yourself has a powerful force in how you express yourself. If you see yourself as an athlete that needs to get into shape, you will have so much more resilience than if you see yourself as someone who's out of shape, who's trying to become an athlete. How you identify yourself, how you define yourself can make all the difference in the world. I, I have a, a great friend. He's on our team. His name is Emerson Nowatny. And Emerson and his wife, Christina, moved down to Mexico City to start a campus called Mosaic Mexico. And when I first came to know Emerson, I found out he had been in federal prison for at least five years for um, selling, I think, something like seven kilos of cocaine. And when he first started speaking on the stage, he would always identify himself as an ex-con. He would always tell the story of the years he was in prison. And I remember sitting down with him and I told him, uh, your story is really, really powerful and it's compelling. And, and I'm so grateful that you have a story past that time when you were in prison. He said, but you cannot let that be your entire story. You do not want your story to be every time you share about when you were in prison. You are not an ex-con. You are a human who spent time in prison. You are not an ex-anything negative. And you do not want to hang your identity on the worst choices of your life and the worst moments of your life. And so we worked through a process where he began seeing himself as a much broader person. And because of that, his platform expanded dramatically, but more important than that, his personhood deepened dramatically. He no longer has his identity rooted in being an ex-con. He no longer has his identity rooted in the fact that he spent five plus years in prison. His identity is now rooted in much deeper and more beautiful things. He's an amazing husband to his wife, Christina. He's an amazing father to his three boys. And it is a so much more powerful identity to be a great father and a great husband. And he is an exceptional leader. He's a great leader to the community in Mexico City. Who Emerson Nowatny is, is a universe. And his experience in prison is a planet or maybe a comet passing through the universe of who he is. A part of the significant process of changing is changing your mind, changing your mind about yourself. And as you change your mind about yourself, you'll find a domino effect where it changes 
all of your reactions and it changes all your actions. It changes your intention. It changes your direction. And you answer so profoundly that a person can in fact change. Can you change? Absolutely. Can you change your mind? That choice is yours. But I want you to know something. The person you imagine that you could become, that person is your soul whispering to you, calling you into a future that only you can choose.